Hello. There's a place for Christian mysticism, and it is in a communion of intimacy and a relationship with the consciousness of Jesus Christ. This mysticism is not an unclear, meaningless feeling of rapture, but communion with the living God. It is an experience brought into being for many of us Christians with the guidance and example of Christ. Jesus ignites the sparks and draws our attention away from the preconceived judgments that prevent us from experiencing the divinity within. The rapture felt is from the love and joy formed in a deeper realization as we become aware of who we really are in the spirit that enriches our life. The science of the spirit teaches us to be mindful of life in a deeper dimension to help us manage and maintain balance. Mystics are seekers, not escapists. They are receptive and not fanatical zealots. They are not going to force their knowledge on anyone because if a person does not smell a flower's heavenly scent, it is not the flower's fault. It can be a stuffed nose or some other distraction with being a shortcoming. So why create a problem? When, spirit, when a spiritual person gains a penetrating perceptiveness of something new that brings it brings joy and a transformation. But not everyone wants to change. So the mystic respects that and enjoys people where they are. I'm going to attempt to give you the good things about accessing the divinity within, the spirit, and the precautions that goes along with spirituality. There's a big difference between the state of spirituality with unity and the independent, isolated state of the personality. The difference is how life is experienced and observed in our human form, where spirituality is observed from the perspective of the soul, while our personality reacts to the mind's perceptions. The mind and the spirit are in our consciousness and are present in each one of us, but usually we are not aware of the spirit. The number one thing about the spirit is there is nothing to become or achieve, because we just have to allow everything to be as everything is already. We can't become aware of what we are already in spirit if we distract our mind with thoughts every minute. With mindfulness, we can observe the thoughts appearing, then passing through our mind without reacting to them. If we take action and respond to the thoughts, we are creating more thoughts and are reacting from the viewpoint of the mind. The mind thinks linear with cause and effect, so one thought leads to another. But if we just observe them, they fall away as we fall deeper into the stillness of the spirit. In the spirit, we become the consciousness of our soul and embrace that there is another experience, an awareness that is not present in the mind. The mind is subject-object relationships, but the consciousness of spirit is being what we experience without the mind drawing us away from it. The first restriction to spiritual experience is we think that there is an approach a structured course of action to be taken. We just have to be still in our being in good times and hard times, not apprehensive, too busy, or attached mentally to let go. We're not going to get the answer with our mind working it out with persuasion, reasoning, or thought, because there is no procedure or process to achieve. There are an infinite number of paths to infinity, and they all go to the same place. So it doesn't matter which one we take. If we don't like the path we are on, we can change to another path. But going around telling people they are on the wrong path is the wrong path because it goes nowhere. The pure awareness of our soul is balanced and peaceful as it, is wit as it witnesses the mind and body despite everything going on around us deepening our wisdom and unfolding our consciousness naturally. 
It is a false belief to think we are separate from our spirit and have to work to attain heaven, spirituality, or God. We are already spirit, so there is nothing to attain, because spirit is one with God in heaven. At this moment, not in the future. We just need to become aware of the moment and stop trying to accomplish something spiritual with the mind. The second good thing is that reality is one pure being in consciousness that we Christians call God and scientists call the quantum soup. This energy is in one reality with many dimensions in eternity, while the physical reality is in eternity but, it, but is temporary in existence. When we realize that the finite is in infinity, we naturally move away from the temporary and gravitate towards a permanent reality. Our awareness expands during the course of being present or mindful of the present moment, because that is how we discover who we are. This awareness is not an attainment or accomplishment, because it is just an awakening, awakening to the one reality in pure consciousness. It is all-encompassing and all-inclusive in every moment, so we just have to enjoy the awakening. We can't control this state of grace because it is just being who we are. It is a result of just being, not doing. It is not a procedure, so we don't have to be compelled to go out and preach, to convert people, but just be who we are in the present. The number two distraction is that every path has two gates. The gate that is egocentric is wide with pleasure and easy to pass through, but it leads to suffering. It has pleasure seeking on one side and pain on the other. Because the pleasure is temporary, so one goes from pleasure to pain back and forth. The gate that is spiritual, it's hard to get through, and few people choose to walk it but it leads to bliss and joy, even when the body is suffering. Walking and being in love with mindfulness makes our path different, but that doesn't mean we are wrong or other people are lost. The desire to know the spirit within gives us the courage to walk our own path in a state of awareness of our true nature. Jesus says that our higher consciousness is our birthright for being the offspring of God, this path is our connection to the higher frequencies as we become attuned, spiritually mature, and emotionally balanced, constantly stepping into the unknown. The third good thing is when we are able to look deep inside ourselves, we find our true self, our higher self, that connects us with the higher frequencies. It does this by removing obstacles so we can witness our thoughts, for example, blaming others or playing the victim. Being in pure consciousness, neutral, being pure awareness, without reacting or judgment, unfolds what is already there, which is pure consciousness. This awakening is true freedom in love and bliss, because there is nothing to do except experience the peace. As Christians, we call it Christ Consciousness. Buddhists can call it Buddhist Consciousness, and so on, with other teachers. We realize this consciousness within as a state of awareness of our true nature. This higher level of attunement, many Christians call atone, atonement. Or if we break up the word atonement, it is at one or unity. We are not choosing the bliss, unity, love, and peace. We are just opening our hearts and minds and experiencing it. The third distraction is that there is no escape from our responsibilities. and We have to manage our mind and thoughts. To provide balance in life, we, just, we have to open our mind to the consciousness of our soul, which is a vibration on a higher frequency. Being Christians, we are not the owner of Christ Consciousness. It is just a label 
of a frequency we align to as Christians. Everyone can open to it because no one is without pure consciousness or spiritual consciousness. We are all welcome to the higher frequency. We all can be tuning forks for the higher vibrations, octaves above the lower frequencies as Christ is for us. We don't lose any information about our, our responsibilities in the lower frequencies because we don't escape the prison of our mind but include it and retain everything that has been learned. We all have sickness and health, good times and hard times. But in Christian mysticism, we understand life with a deeper thought and insight. The distraction is we identify with the mind, but spirituality is mind management to help us maintain balance. If we can't manage our mind and thoughts, we lose our balance and bounce off of pleasure and pain because we are not in the moment. We have to enjoy, relish, and delight in what is happening when it happens, instead of thinking of grudges, loathing, wrongdoings, past, or the future, or hurt feelings. Enjoying the moment is a spiritual practice. The spirit is not stern, humorless, or unpleasantly seriously minded because those are symptoms of achieving. The spiritual way is lighthearted, good-humored, and full of life, freeing us from disturbances and mistaken beliefs. It enriches the imagination to help us get beyond restricting ideas that hold us back. Spirituality is all about having fun. It is not suffering or going all out to be the best. The spiritual life is always present within us in the higher frequencies, working and having fun at the higher level, even while working. Our soul works at a high frequency, emitting love, a vibration that transforms everything it happens upon, even making work fun because we attune to our spiritual consciousness. This pure consciousness surrounds us, permeates us, and fulfills us as it is playful, even in the universe, making life a spiritual practice, fun and playful, a waking up, exploring, and discovering. It never abandons or forgets us as it is alive in each one of us, but we are the ones that take it for granted and stop being mindful of it in the present moment. Our spiritual practice Practices are different, and that is okay, as long as we make friends with the divinity within, which brings us to the present moment by getting our attention. Mindfulness awakens us to the higher frequencies, and our very bright vibration changes as we attune to the higher octave. Being in the present moment is an important part of mental health because we are not worrying about the future or depressed about the past. Children are happy and don't have a past nor a future turning in their minds because they are present in the here and now. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, 3-4 The little things in the present moment are the miracles of being alive, which is self-acceptance and making friends with who we truly are as we experience being.